country. We just left Pennsylvania helping Dr. Oz. We're here for her show. We're going to be doing something for Brian Kemp. And as we go across the country, everybody is realizing they don't have the luxury of politics because things are tough right now. They go to the gas station and it costs more and that's how they get to work. They go to the grocery store and it's more expensive and that's how they feed their families. We're seeing that utility prices have gone up. One out of every six Americans can't pay their utility bill. And we're looking at the fact that America's $30 trillion in debt. We're having to borrow money just to make our interest payments. And what's happening in Washington? Washington continues to spend. Their answer to inflation is to raise your taxes. And they continue to do it without understanding any sacrifices that you're making. Do you know what they spent this past year that Raphael Warnock supported? Two and a half million for bike trails in Vermont. 12 million for a football stadium in New York. 15 million to try and get the World Cup in New Jersey. Six and a half million for golf courses in Colorado. Think about that. Want to get more mad? One billion dollars went to federal inmates. Twenty billion dollars went to illegal immigrants. And if it wasn't so sad, 463,000 went to pigeons learning how to play slot machines. I'm not kidding you. Raphael Warnock supported that. They don't understand the value of a dollar, and we continue to see it. They're basically taking from people who didn't go to college and saying you have to pay for those who did go to college. They're going and giving these tax credits to buy electric vehicles for $7,500 with people who can't afford electric vehicles. And then their answer, which Raphael Warnack supported, I love Clemson football, yeah, right? Woo! and we love playing your Georgia teams. They just now hired enough IRS agents that would fill Death Valley. 87,000 IRS agents? Think about that. They're coming after you to pay for the tax hikes that they just passed. Raphael Warnock did that. Then you go and you look at crime. I don't need to tell you about crime in Atlanta, but you're not alone. We're seeing that crime all over the country. And you've got people like Raphael Warnock who are glorifying inmates, glorifying felons, and they're trying to remove anything that would allow law enforcement officers to protect themselves and to protect you. We're seeing the highest crime we've seen in decades. Something's got to give. And you look at the border, and I see many Indian American people who I know and love and am so glad you came. I take care, my husband and I take care of my parents. They are now 85 and 89. They live with us. They came here from India. They came here legally. They put in the time. They put in the price like all of these people did. My mom, every night at dinner, is so offended at the illegal immigration that continues to cross these borders because they knew what it was like to do it the right way. They don't want to see someone give it a pass. And you look at legal immigrants, they're more patriotic than any of the liberals these days because they love America. And they came here and they're willing to work for what they need. But you look at Raphael Warnock and he believes in sanctuary cities. He believes in amnesty. He believes in getting rid of the rule of law. We can't keep having that. Do you know enough illegal immigrants have crossed the border since Biden's been in office that would create the seventh largest city in America? Think about that. We already know 50 terrorists were caught. How many weren't caught? And then you go and you look at what's happening in education. Everybody's saying our kids are having a hard time because of COVID. We had a problem with education before COVID 
Did you know pre-COVID, 65% of fourth graders in this country were not proficient in reading? 66% of eighth graders weren't proficient in reading or math. Now you go and you bring COVID. And think about a child like in rural South Carolina. They're on a screen they've never used before, using a hotspot on a school bus down the street. Now let's assume that child is in third grade. What's he learning? Fractions, reading, history. Do you think the teachers unions are gonna tell him to hold, tell the parents to hold that child back? They're not. When we know if a child can't read by third grade, they're four times less likely to graduate high school. We think we have labor problems now. Wait until five years from now when we have a lot of kids that can't graduate. We are failing our kids, not because of COVID, but because we've lost sight of what we need to make sure they can be successful. Every generation wants their kids to be better than the one before. We've started to go backwards on that. But what's happened? You've got Raphael Warnock who has supported mandates, supported closing schools, and doesn't want to go anywhere against the unions and actually support the teachers trying to do the good jobs out there. That's the problems that we continue to see. And then we've got foreign policy disasters. No one usually pays attention to foreign policy, but right now everybody can tell we've got different threats throughout the world. And let me tell you, we would never have a war in Ukraine if we would not have had that blunder in Afghanistan. I'm the wife of a combat veteran. Let me tell you, the idea that we left Bagram Air Force Base in the middle of the night without telling our allies who stood shoulder to shoulder with us for decades because we asked them to be there. Think about what that told our friends. More importantly, think about what it told our enemies. You remember the food processing plant and the pipeline that was hacked by Russia? Russia wasn't doing that to destabilize us. Russia was seeing how we would react. Do you know what we did? Nothing. And now you've got Biden falling all over himself to get back into the Iran deal, which Raphael Warnock supports, from terrorists who say death to America every day. And then lead, because we're not allowed in the negotiating room, do you know who the lead negotiator for us is? Russia. We're counting on one enemy to negotiate with another enemy for us? Raphael Warnock supports that. But of all the threats we have, the biggest threat I see facing America is what's happening within. This national self-loathing, this idea that America's bad, this idea that America's racist. Let me tell you, my parents came here from India with $8 in their pocket, the same story that so many of you have. They worked hard. They put in all the effort so that their children could have a better life and their daughter became the first minority governor in America. America is not a racist country. America is a country where I saw and talked to the ambassadors at the UN and they loved the fact that we had freedom of speech, freedom of religion, freedom to do and be anything we wanted to be without government getting in the way. You've got a distinct difference in Herschel Walker and Raphael Warnock. But I want to say first um, that, especially to the Indian American community that came out, one, it warms my heart that you came. We have seen the Indian community vote Democrat for a long time. Not because they're Democrats. My parents voted Democrat until Reagan. You know why? Because Republicans never talked to them. Herschel Walker wanted to talk to you. Herschel Walker said he wanted the Indian American community to know that he was going to fight for them too. That's what this is about. And for all of you to give you a little bit about the Indian American community. Did you know the Indian American community is the minority that is the most educated in America? It's the minority that has the highest per income of capita in America. It's the minority that's the least dependent on government assistance. But the one I love the most, 
the Indian American minority is the minority that is the most philanthropic of any minority in the country. They believe in giving back. But now's the time everybody needs to step up. Because you can go the route of Raphael Warnock and you've had, he's, he's got a voting record now. He's been for increasing taxes. He's been for regulating and mandating businesses. He's been from taking money from one group and giving it to another. He's been soft on crime. He's been taking government money and spending it like it's not taxpayers, but spending it like it's money that can be had. He started earmark support again. If you're comfortable with that, vote for Raphael Warnock. But if you want something better, not only is Herschel Walker a great football player, wait until you see the moves he does in Congress. Because he absolutely understands the value of a dollar because he had to work hard and earn it. He absolutely will not ever support a tax hike because he knows what it does to Georgia families. He's going to take care of your kids and fight to make sure that parents can see what's happening in classrooms and not have things done behind their back. He's going to support the fact that we shouldn't have biological males playing in girls' sports. He's against critical race theory where if you have a kindergartner, a five-year-old girl, and she walks into class, if she's white, they tell her she's bad, and if she's brown or black, they tell her she's not good enough and she'll always be a victim. He's never going to have anything that's going to divide America. He's going to try and push for what unites America. He's got this Unite Georgia tour because he's tired of all the divisions that we're seeing. And he's tired of government working against the people. So when I tell you right now, we all need to get out and vote. We need to get everybody registered to vote. This is a dead heat. Raphael Warnock never knew that was going to happen. We could win this and all eyes are on Georgia. So if you want to win this, if you want a fighter, if you want a freedom fighter, a patriot, someone who will watch out for your money and watch out for your kids, you will go and elect a senator who will never stop having your back. Give it up for Herschel Walker.